Hello, uh, it's uh, HPOP from TV. Uh, we, it is a pleasure for us to uh, host uh, David Matas, uh, lawyer, uh, human rights activist and leader, publisher of various books. It's a pleasure for us to uh, have you in our TV. Thank you. Uh, you are one of the uh, co-authors of a uh, few reports on uh, China's organ harvesting. Uh, the reports uh, expose the mass killings uh, of innocents in China. Mm. Uh, who are the victims and the real uh, perpetrators uh, of this uh, atrocity? Uh, the victims are, are primarily practitioners of the spiritually based set of exercises Falun Gong, but there are also Uyghurs. Uh, Tibetans and house Christians, uh, Eastern Lightning, but uh, other evangelical uh, house Christians as well. The perpetrators, uh, hospitals, uh, prisons, uh, the uh, legal system, uh, the Communist Party, uh, the uh, 610 office, which is a office for repression of uh, Falun Gong, it's, it's a, there's a, a widespread network of perpetrators. I, I mean, we are dealing with mass killings, and mass killings mean uh, a mass of victims, but also a mass of perpetrators. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Chinese Communist Party is uh, engaged in that. Uh, do we know how, how much they are uh, approving it or uh, supporting it? The, uh, they have actually said, uh, uh, incited uh, the, their own operatives to kill Falun Gong. The, uh, the, the, the dynamics of the repression uh, were that uh, the party was, they, um, uh, they initially uh, banned or repressed Falun Gong in, with the decision of June uh, 10th, 1999, which is why this repression office was called 610, uh, six, uh, the tenth month of the, mm -hmm. the tenth day of the sixth month. And the uh, Falun Gong was very popular before it was banned, and and was banned before it was uh, because it was popular. There was no law uh, banning it; it was just party policy. Uh, and the initial banning led to widespread incomprehension because people couldn't see what was wrong with Falun Gong. It's mm -hmm. like India banned yoga. I mean, it just didn't make any sense to mm -hmm. most people. So it led to a, a sequence of mass demonstrations and. And the, the the policy of stopping people to practice Falun Gong really wasn't working. So, the the Communist Party called a meeting of all its 610 operatives uh, in uh, November 1999 uh, to try to uh, increase the pressure uh, on Falun Gong to get them to abandon. Uh, and, and there are reports of that meeting uh, by people who attended, and uh, the party decision was, and, and the, these are the words used by party officials at the meeting, destroy their reputations, uh, the, uh, bankrupt them financially, uh, and, and destroy them physically. Uh, mm -hmm. Ruin their reputations, uh, bankrupt them financially, and, and destroy them physically. So the, there was a call for the mass killing of Falun Gong. Uh, obviously only if they didn't recant, but uh, many of them uh, did not. Now, uh, the, the form of mass killing became uh, killing of Falun Gong for their organs because uh, at the same time as this was happening, uh, the repression of Falun Gong, the, uh, China was shifting from socialism to capitalism meant it was withdrawing money from the health sector and, and all the public mm -hmm. sector. And, and the health sector needed to get funds from the private sector. And so this became the primary way of um, raising funds. Now, obviously, when you're dealing with prisoners, you're dealing with the state. I mean, uh, these are not people on the street. Uh, they, these are people who are brought out of detention to, uh, to uh, the, the operating rooms and, uh, and, and made accessible. They were being blood tested and organ examined in the prisons. Uh, and uh, many of the hospitals that were doing these transplants were uh, military hospitals because uh, the military in China is a uh, conglomerate business and they're allowed to raise money on their own doing anything and, and so they began uh, selling uh, organs uh, to, to raise money on their own and so you're dealing with the military, you're dealing with the prisons, uh, the courts became the organ distribution system. Uh, so, so you're uh, dealing with uh, the courts uh, and 
So this is obviously state-run, party-run. This is mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. a private black market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think you understand. And uh, but China uh, rejects claims that uh, it continues to use uh, these organs from execute prisoners, and uh, it says uh, it stopped the practice in uh, 2015. What is your take on it? China says lots, of, uh, I mean, I shouldn't say China, but the Communist Party says lots of things that it just suit its own propaganda purposes. They deny the existence of the Tiananmen Square massacre, uh, they, they deny the existence of uh, the uh, Korean invasion. Uh, I, I mean, they write the, uh, their own history, they give their own statistic, uh, statistics to serve their own propaganda political purposes, but it's I, I, any. Uh, relation to reality is, is mere coincidence. The only time what the party says relates to reality is when that reality serves their own political purposes. Uh, and I mean that's true generally and it's also true about what they say about stopping in 2015. Uh, basically when they say stopped in 2015 they are telling people from outside what they think people outside want to hear. But uh, there's nothing to substantiate uh, that. I mean, they can say mm -hmm. it, but it doesn't mean it's really happening. And in fact, uh, although, I mean, even the law is no guarantee of uh, anything happening in China since the communists control the law and the courts, there is no law saying they stopped in 2015. They just kind of announced mm -hmm. we're stopping it in 2015, but with no, no apparent change in transplant volumes or practices. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see any progress uh, being made in understanding of uh, this issue, this crime uh, against humanity? And uh, what can you tell us about um, the transplantation establishment in the West? Uh, they are reacting on it or uh, they are just cooperating with China? Well, those are two questions. Uh, I, I would say in terms of understanding, there has been a development of understanding uh, uh, over the years now, because uh, I've been working on this file for 13 years, but there's been a resolution of the U.S. Congress, there's been a resolution of the European Parliament, uh, the Canadian Subcommittee on Human Rights, there's been an investigation by the uh, Australian Parliament, uh, the United Nations Committee on Torture has, has made some uh, I I important comments in, uh, in commenting on uh, Chinese reports under the Convention, the UN Rapporteur on Torture, uh, has addressed at the UN Rapporteur uh, on uh, r religious intolerance and so there is a, a kind of uh, growing uh, understanding uh, around the world of uh, the abuse that's happening. I'm after our report came out, David Kilgore and I, Ethan Gutman wrote his own book uh, on the issue. There's been a couple of NGOs established now to deal with the issue, uh, Doctors Against Forest Organ Harvesting, the International Coalition to End Transplant Abuse in China. So I would say there, there's a widening appreciation uh, uh, and understanding the problem. When it comes to the transplantation profession, uh, I would say th uh, th they're split. I mean, there's been some uh, people who've been very good on the issue. Uh, the uh, Anand Sharif, Jay Levy, uh, Anika Tebel, uh, th these are transplant professionals who've been leaders in uh, trying to combat the abuse in China. But there's others who've uh, been not so good. They basically have uh, been beguiled by Chinese statements of reform and promises of reform and red carpet treatment uh, and, and Potemkin village displays. So, uh, and uh, they've also oscillated at some points. They've criticized China and then China changes at least to them a little bit by saying the right things and then they, the criticism abates. Uh, the, the transplantation profession, I would say, first of all, is, is heavily targeted by the Chinese because the Chinese, uh, the, the Chinese communists, because the, the Chinese uh, transplant profession wants global recognition and, mm -hmm. and uh, so they don't like to be ostracized and try to combat against it. Uh, uh, so on the one hand, you've got, got uh, t targeting by the, the communists, on the other hand, You've got a profession which, I mean, basically knows transplantation, but doesn't necessarily know history or communism or human rights or international law. And so uh, uh, th they are, I would say, some of them easily bamboozled. So uh, I would say within the profession, uh, I mean, I guess like everywhere else, there's people who are aware and others not so much, and uh, people who uh, are kind of effective uh, functionally and others not so much. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what Polish government or, and Polish society could do or should do uh, to pressure Chinese, Chinese government to, to stop this process? Well, uh, there's two things. Uh, uh, when you're dealing with sort of abuse, uh, what one is, 
as you say, pressure China. Now, because this is state run and there's a lot of people compromised and it's institutionalized and a lot of money being made uh, and uh, getting China to stop it is not so easy. Uh, and, and the only, because it is Communist Party uh, directed, the only way to stop it is if the Communist Party feels there's more of a political cost to continuing it uh, than to keeping it. And right now, there isn't much of a political cost to the continuation. And I think what the Polish government and other governments can do would be to increase the political cost of continuing the abuse, and that would, uh, that would help to stop it. And they can do it by raising the issue bilaterally, by raising the issue multilaterally, raising it the UN Human Rights Council. I mean, the UN Human Rights Council, every session talks about human rights violations around the world. And you don't have to be a member of the council to speak uh, to, to the council on those issues. And so this issue could be raised by uh, Poland and every other country mm -hmm. at the Human Rights Council. The, uh, but, uh, so, so that's one thing, is pressuring China. But the other thing uh, th that it, it Poland could do and, and should do is avoid complicity in what's happening uh, in China. I mean, change in China ultimately is up to China. But avoiding complicity, Polish complicity, is up to Poland. Uh, and, and that's something that Poland can do uh, on its own. I mean, one thing that's very specific and seems to obvious to me is the Council of, Treaty, uh, uh, Council of Europe Treaty on Organing and uh, Trafficking in Human Organs. Poland signed that treaty March uh, 23rd, 2015, the day the treaty was open for signature. Four years later, there's seven ratifying states, but Poland's not one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, why is Poland delaying? I mean, Poland should ratify it. And if mm -hmm. they did, they would have implementing legislation that would penalize brokerage, penalize advertising, penalizing transplant tourism into China. Uh, and and it, it would be, in a f uh, I mean, it's not a complete answer, but it, it is an effective way of doing it. And what's more, uh, uh, in theory, it shouldn't be hard to persuade the government because by signing the treaty, they've indicated an intention to do this. So now that they've indicated the intention to do it, they should carry through on that intention and actually do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, our TV has uh, organized a number of uh, screenings in Poland uh, and uh, we show uh, Hard to Believe, the movie uh, which talks about uh, harvesting in China and uh, also we promoted the movie in the name of Confucius. Confucius. Uh, the movie uh, is also features you. Uh, what, uh, how did you get involved in this uh, whole issue with the Confucius Institute? Well, I, I got involved because there was a particular Falun Gong practitioner who was uh, an employee of the Confucius Institute McMaster University in Hamilton in uh, Ontario in Canada who uh, complained about discrimination uh, by McMaster University mm -hmm. because of uh, the way Confucius was run which uh, which basically uh, says uh, they said on their website at the time we do not hire Falun Gong practitioners. Uh, and, and so uh, in order to get the job, she disguised the fact that she was a Falun Gong practitioner and, and then uh, afterwards uh, complained about it, the, this hiring policy. Initially, the reaction of McMaster was, that's their problem, it's not ours. This happened abroad, it didn't happen in Canada. Um, I represented her, Sonia Zhao, uh, uh, for her complaint. She made a complaint to the Ontario Human Rights uh, Tribunal. And, uh, and uh, we entered into negotiations with McMaster University and, and basically through arbitration uh, we ended uh, uh, up in an agreement and uh, the, as a result of the agreement uh, McMaster no longer has a Confucius Institute and, uh, and McMaster made a statement, a non-discriminatory statement. Uh, I had uh, argued basically that you know, you can't say uh, you didn't know about it because it was on English on their website that they were discriminating. And, and the problem, uh, you know, once the Confucius Institute is uh, at McMaster, is the problem is happening at McMaster. It isn't just happening in, in, in China. And the uh, as after McMaster did that, uh, the Canadian Association of University Teachers passed a resolution uh, saying universities should not have. Confucius Institutes and Sherbrooke University withdrew its Confucius Institute uh, afterwards. The American Association of University Professors also subsequently passed a similar re resolution saying American universities should not have Confucius Institutes and as a result of that resolution a couple of American universities withdrew their Confucius Institutes, University of Chicago, University of Pennsylvania uh, and so uh, there uh, uh, and 
I, I'm familiar with Confucian Institutes not just through this incident because I'm uh, speaking on organ transplant abuse in China all over the place and there's a number of places uh, where I get last minute cancellations when I speak at universities and the universities have Confucius Institutes. Uh, I mean that just happened a few months ago in, in Melbourne, Australia where the University of Victoria um, had a, has a Confucius Institute. Uh, I was supposed to be speaking uh, uh, with the screening of this film uh, at, at the University of Victoria. They ca cancelled the venue at the last minute. We, we went to speak at a church instead. They said the cancellation was a result of an overbooking, but we mm -hmm, sent mm -hmm. some people down there and, and, and the room we had booked was empty and all the other rooms mm -hmm, were empty. Mm -hmm, so okay. uh, it, it was an obvious uh, ploy just to get us out. And So, I, I mean, the Confucius Institutes in universities, uh, I mean, the problem isn't just discriminatory hiring, although that's very obvious. It's because, I mean, you, through the way back machine, you can still see that discriminatory hiring policy on the internet. It, it's, it's that they are, they are running the Chinese communist propaganda agenda within the universities uh, in, in terms of uh, spying, in, in terms of history, in, 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 in terms of uh, uh, presenting their view of what the Communist Party is. Uh, it's it's a it's it's a, a, a political non-academic force in an academic institution it shouldn't be there uh, and uh, and I mean obviously I agree with the, the these resolutions of these uh, academic organizations shouldn't be anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, experienced the it's very hard to screen uh, the these movies the, in the name of Confucius and uh, hard to believe uh, in the Polish universities. Why? Because uh, there are. Mm, few uh, that uh, are, inter uh, that are co uh, cooperating with Confucius Institute, but more uni universities are interested in establishing uh, mm -hmm. it. And uh, we can hear uh, day after day that more and more uni universities are uh, talking about uh, Confucius in, uh, Institute. And uh, mm, it seems they are pleased to cooperate with uh, Chinese. And uh, what can you tell uh, the Polish audience and <laughs> the academic world in Poland uh, why sh they shouldn't do this? Poland's got a, a recent and bitter his history with communism. I mean, Poland should sh be sensitive uh, uh, to the abuses of communists far more than Canada and the United States because uh, people here have lived it. I mean, they know it personally. Uh, and, and so they shouldn't be surprised about what the Confucius Institute is uh, and, and they should know well enough that they don't want to cooperate with it. I mean, there's a lot of reservation, hesitation about cooperating with Polish communists. Why should it be any different for Chinese communists? I mean, it's the same <laughs> communism. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but uh, have you ever uh, uh, um, experienced any threats from the uh, China's, uh, Chinese communists? Uh, yes, uh, there have been a few things. Uh, I mean, there have been the cancellations, which mm -hmm. uh, aren't so much threats as mm -hmm. uh, uh, nuisances. But uh, uh, there's been a few specific things. I mean, uh, uh, both times in Australia, the, the, the uh, one was uh, at Brisbane, one was near Brisbane, different years. Uh, one time, um, well, I was supposed to speak at Bonn University uh, uh, and it, it was one of these last minute cancellations so we went to a, a community center instead at uh, Surfers Paradise and uh, the it was set up so I would speak to the people in the room but also people from the internet could call in from China and listen and ask questions. So uh, we had this China connection and somebody from China calls in after I give my talk and says, uh, and it supposedly to ask me a question, uh, but the question was this, he says, what you're doing is putting your life at risk. Are mm -hmm. you not afraid? He says, mm -hmm. I am from the internet police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. my question. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I said, uh, look, if you don't like what I'm saying about organ transplant abuse in China, what you should be doing is trying to end organ transplant abuse in China and don't threaten me. Uh, and, uh, and then he was cut off. So that was one instance. Uh, and uh, another instance, uh, I think it's a year or two later, and this was in Brisbane proper, the Epoch Times was hosting an event in which I was speaking. Uh, the day before the, the talk, uh, they, they, they had a, uh, a, a drive-by shooting at their offices. Somebody shot, shot through the window, uh, sort of broke the glass. Uh, 
they chased after the car. It was a black car, uh, no license plates, uh, Chinese ethnics in the car. They, they attributed it to the fact that they were hosting me speaking. Uh, uh, that shooting was actually a, uh, a worldwide uh, wire story uh, at the time. So mm -hmm. uh, th that was alarming. And, and sure, uh, I mean, there are, I would say, minor risks uh, for me associated with what I'm doing, but it's nothing compared to the risks that uh, Gao Jisheng or uh, other human rights lawyers in China face dealing with this issue. I mean, uh, Gao Jisheng has been very good on this issue. He, he uh, his practice was shut down, his office was closed down, he lost his bar license, his, his, his staff was all fired, he was put in jail, he was tortured, he was beaten, his family fled, they're now refugees in the U.S. Uh, uh, the, uh, in, in China, if you uh, oppose human rights violations like this, you become a human rights victim yourself, where, uh, I mean, uh, and uh, so, the, I mean, one of the advantages I have, or the others involved in the issue have, is that uh, we don't run the same risk as insiders. We're relatively freer to do uh, this, and, and, uh, and from my view, we should take advantage of that relative uh, freedom or lesser risk to, to mm -hmm, do something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in light of increased uh, persecution of uh, Christians uh, and uh, Catholics in China, uh, what can you tell us about uh, the secret agreement between the Vatican and uh, Beijing? Well, uh, the, uh, the, the Vatican and Beijing uh, had an agreement. Uh, I mean, hi historically the way uh, China has operated religions is it's tried to control them. Uh, they uh, have uh, appointed the Catholic bishops. They've uh, appointed the uh, the Muslim imams. Uh, with with the Buddhists, uh, the Tibetan Buddhists, they, mm -hmm. they uh, appointed the Panchen Lama. They've tried to control the line of succession. Uh, the uh, and part of the reason uh, they repressed Falun Gong is it was so dispersed. I mean, it wasn't hierarchical. There was nobody they could appoint to run Falun Gong because Falun Gong just doesn't work that way. I mean, it's a people uh, doing a set of exercises, and anybody can do it. You don't join anything. You, know, you don't pay anybody any money, and so it was just impossible to control in a hierarchical sort of way. But uh, the uh, the agreement, as I understand it, I mean, obviously, I don't know. I haven't seen a secret mm -hmm, agreement, mm -hmm, but okay. uh, my, my understanding is that the the agreement uh, is uh, an agreement that they would both accept. Uh, particular bishops that the the, uh, the Catholic Church would accept the the bishops that the Communist Party appointed. Uh, that's my understanding of the nature of agreement, which uh, kind of steps outside uh, the organ transplant issue. Except that the uh, th there was a, a pontifical summit on organ transplant abuse uh, organized by uh, Bishop Sorondo. Uh, which invited the Chinese and kind of applauded them for their progress and uh, took basically no note, uh, kind of totally sidelined the criticism of, of them. I mean, it was just sort of outside the, the, the scope of the Congress. It was, it was in effect a, a, a whitewashing, an endorsement of what was going on, uh, on in China, which uh, in any context is scandalous, but the, the question became, is there a link uh, between uh, the, 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 the way the whitewashing the, the pontifical summit gave to the Chinese transplant system and this negotiated secret agreement? Uh, I mean, I can't answer that question. It's speculation whether there, mm -hmm. there, there was a link or not, but the, the whole thing looks suspicious. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a more personal question? Mm -hmm. Because I heard that you travel a lot, mm -hmm. uh, you week by week you are uh, on the different continent, country. Mm -hmm. uh, you work very hard, and uh, much time you spend for this, uh, just for uh, free because uh, it's it's uh, pro bono uh, work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, how you feel about this? How, how what can you tell uh, our viewers to to build them uh, to, to to work as hard as you? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I mean, that's not my uh, goal is that everybody should work. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay, but it could be an yeah. inspiration, yeah? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I, I'm uh, Jewish and, uh, and I was struck growing up by the Holocaust and I was trying to think what should be done about it now that it's after it's over. And I was trying to figure out what lessons could be learned from what happened uh, and to act on them in uh, my own life and 
the lessons I thought I'd learned from my own consideration of the Holocaust is the need to combat incitement to hatred, to protect refugees, to bring perpetrators to justice, and to stand up for human rights violations everywhere, uh, and not just violations with which uh, I have a personal connection. And uh, the, uh, I mean, in theory, if uh, the Nazis rather than the Allied powers had won World War II, neither I nor any Jewish person would be alive today. But I mean, thankfully, the Allied powers did win World War II, and and I personally and uh, have not been a, a, a victim, no, nor any of my family, nor mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. I know has been a victim of the Holocaust. But uh, it, it's just uh, I, I felt the need uh, to do something because realistically, uh, okay, there were six million Jews killed in the Holocaust, but. There were 60 million people uh, killed in uh, World War II. Uh, I, I think uh, there was 8 million non-Jewish Poles that were killed in World War mm -hmm. II. I mean, a huge number. And uh, the and and you can't stop human rights violations when they get to you. By the time they get to you, it's too late. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, if we don't stop transplant abuse in China. It'll be too late when it comes. I mean, if somebody comes to you to arrest you to kill you for your organs, there's not a lot you can do about it. I mean, the way to stop it is to stop it before it gets to that stage. And and there's also uh, uh, these crimes are crimes against humanity, which means we are all victims. Uh, the the innocents who are killed are all people who could lead useful, productive uh, lives from which we all benefit. And, and by the loss of the lives of these innocents, uh, we lose the benefit those lives could give to all humanity. So, uh, the, uh, I think there's a, a number of different reasons. Now, I wouldn't say people need to work as hard as I do, but uh, I think they, everybody should be concerned about human rights violations anywhere because we are all part of uh, the same human family and we all face the same risks. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. It was a pleasure for, okay, for us you. to host you. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And good okay. luck in your okay. work. Thank you. Thanks for asking.